Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today we are finally going to be reviewing the TiVo Tarantula 3D printer. This is the TiVo Tarantula 2017 edition. I do not know what the difference is between this and the first one, but just a heads up that this is going to be based off of the 2017 edition, so if you're looking into picking up one that's not, if you can even get your hands on one, this review might not pertain to that because, again, I don't know what the difference is. So you'll probably be picking up a 2017 edition. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the review. So starting off, the TiVo Tarantula came in a really nice box. It came in a box inside of a box, uh, which was surprising, an actual TiVo Tarantula branded box with nice black foam inserts that kept everything very well protected. Nothing was damaged during shipping. And on top of the box on the inside was a really thick booklet or manual for building the printer, which is really nice uh, because most of the time printers that I've gotten, at least kits, don't come with any kind of paper manual. Usually you get a micro SD card or SD card that you then have to plug in your computer and there's some kind of a link or a PDF on that SD card that you can follow, but not having to be glued in front of the computer while building this was a really nice change. On top of that, it came with two small spools of uh, filament. One was purple, one was black, both PLA. I've seen from other videos that there's other colors that you can get too, so I don't know if the filament colors are at random, but it could potentially be at random. But regardless, everything came extremely nicely packaged in a very pleasant looking, uh, I don't know, setup. Assembling the 3D printer was not bad at all. It was one of the easier uh, kit printers that I've assembled. This could be, again, because I've assembled so many now, I've got it down to a clockwork. Also, in the past, I've been recording YouTube videos of the build along with potentially live streaming, which takes a hell of a lot longer because I've got camera angles and I'm talking and things like that. This one, I was able to knock out in roughly three to four hours, which is a lot quicker than the normal six to nine, depending on the complexity and what's going on of the printer. And I assembled it in two different uh, like sittings. The first sitting was all of the hardware and I plugged in the electronics. The second one was actually doing some calibration and checking out the firmware and getting all of that correct. So I did it over the course of two days, but all the, all the actual hardware was assembled in the first uh, first night and that was very quick and roughly three three ish hours once I assembled it before I even printed one main issue I ran into was the bed it was extremely wobbly and um, I could not seem to get it tighter. I saw that there's these things called eccentric nuts that you install on all of the different axes on the different um, bearings that make the axes move and it said to tighten them in order to tighten up the bed and I kept trying to do that and it didn't seem like no matter what I did things were getting better so I ended up having to look up a YouTube video which I'll place in the description or actually have it I'll link you guys over to 3d print love where I kind of posted this whole review already and once I watched that I was able to tighten the bed it's not a hundred percent as tight as some of my machines but it's fairly tight I would say on a scale from 1 to 10, I got it at like an 8.5 to maybe 9, so it's really close. But the eccentric nuts were a pain in the butt, especially if you've never used them before, which I've never even heard of them. So um, that might cause some trouble for you if you are building this printer. But once you watch that video and, and understand that when you're tightening them, it's not about continually spinning them. It's literally like a half tiny little bit of a turn to tighten them. Um, it's really not that difficult, but still kind of silly to me. Uh, but anyways, I'll talk more about that in a little bit here. Once I did that, I leveled the bed just using a piece of paper that I had and I set out to do my first print, which I also published on YouTube. The print didn't turn out terrible, but there was some really serious under extrusion going on, which I ended up having to calibrate the steps on the extruder motor and also adjust the tension on the screw for the extruder. Uh, which did fix the issue very nicely, which was good. <laughs> I was glad that it wasn't anything more than that. After using the printer for the last couple of weeks or even month now, I put together a list of the things I like and dislike about the TiVo Tarantula 2017. So I'm going to start off with the things I do like about it, and then we'll look at the things that I think the printer could definitely use some work with. So for starters, the price of this printer is roughly $185, give or take. You can find it a little bit cheaper, a little more expensive, depending on where you purchase and uh, the time, if there's any sales going on, which is a very budget-friendly 3D printer, and it's right up there with some of the cheaper printers that I've e ever reviewed. One difference between this machine and many of the other similarly priced ones is the frame is mostly aluminum on the TiVo Tarantula. This is much nicer and way more durable than some of the nearly full acrylic frames that uh, come on a lot of the similarly priced printers, like the Anet A8, for example, is the one that comes to mind right now. There is definitely still some acrylic on this, but the overall main frame is 2020 aluminum extrusions, which is a lot nicer. 
Another thing that I really liked was how I mentioned earlier, the build process was really painless. Um, this doesn't mean that if you have no knowledge of 3D printers or that you don't have any experience with electronics, so this will be easy because I don't consider building a kit 3D printer easy for your average Joe, but it does mean that if you have some idea of what's going on, it's definitely better than a lot of the other kit printers that I have built in the past. This printer does come with a hotbed, which is really nice. It'll allow you to print PLA, ABS, PETG, and along with a wide variety of other materials. And the build plate has a layer of kind of build tech, uh, which I would assume is like a knockoff build tech material. And prints stick to it extremely well. I had no problem getting my PLA prints to stick to the bed. Um, sometimes it was a little bit rough getting them off, but I'd rather have them stuck a little too hard than losing a print halfway or a quarter through the print. That's always very frustrating. Again, as long as your bed is, uh, is leveled accordingly. The extruder on this machine came with two options, both an aluminum more traditional style extruder along with the plastic TiVo Titan extruder. Originally I wanted to try out the TiVo Titan extruder because it was something different, but the uh, motor was set to extrude backwards so I had to actually reflash the printer and change the direction of the stepper motor and I was having some serious issues with that uh, extruder. So I swapped out for the aluminum, which is it seems like what most people are using with this machine and that one worked flawlessly. But it's nice that they gave you two options if you can get the other one working and, you know, do have luck with it. Printer also comes with an LCD screen, which is quite common with a lot of these printers and seems to be more of a standard. But regardless, at one point and with some of my machines, they didn't have an LCD screen. So it's really nice for untethered 3D printing. You can print directly from an SD card. And if you don't want to set up something like a Raspberry Pi with OctoPrint, which I highly recommend, it's still a nice option to not have to have a USB and a computer on the whole time you're printing. Last but not least, the printer also has a great community on Facebook. I did a live stream on this printer and I had a guy tune in that shared some links with me and I'll place the links in the description for a couple Facebook groups. One is a general TiVo group, which will help you with kind of basic things. And another one is for advanced users, which will be uh, a series of like upgrades and tweaking and things like that. So having a community behind a 3D printer is extremely nice and will save you a lot of headache versus trying to build a 3D printer kit that nobody's ever heard of. Um, there's a lot less upgrades and a lot less help out there. So that is a a definite plus and something I take into consideration when reviewing a kit printer. Now that we've looked at the things that I like about the printer, I'm going to look at some of the things that I think it could use some improvement in. And the first one is the Z-axis. The Z-axis only has one lead screw, which to me is just poor design. This means that the side without the lead screw has significant sag, and even with tightening those eccentric nuts that fix the bed issue, it still sags very heavily. What this means is that your bed is going to have to be leveled at a pretty sharp angle to offset that sag that is created on the X-axis. It didn't really seem to affect the print quality once I leveled it again at that angle, but to me, again, they should have included a second lead screw with a second stepper motor for the other side of the Z-axis. Um, but again, they didn't. So that's something that I think is silly. There is upgrades available, but to me, that should be something that was part of the 2017 version of this. Next, again, I'm referring back to them. The eccentric nuts are a pain. Uh, there's no reason to me why the machining cannot be good enough to where you don't need to tweak the eccentric nuts to even be able to get things to not wobble. I've never needed them on any of my kits in the past, and I think that they're definitely going to cause headaches for quite a few people. And I know that they have, based off that YouTube video I found explaining how to use them, he was talking about seeing people in like a help group or forums that were having issues with those eccentric nuts. So I'm definitely not alone. Last but not least is the placement of the main board, which again can be fixed if you do a separate housing or relocate it. But the main board for the TiVo tarantula is mounted on the front right side and it's in clear acrylic. What this means is that the cable management is a complete nightmare and it's really near impossible to not have a rat's nest of cables. I kind of have a theory that the reason why it's called the tarantula is because the cables look like a spider web of just a mess. Um, it's, it doesn't affect the printer other than for aesthetic. Um, I mean, potentially something could get snagged or pulled on, so I guess that could affect the printer. I haven't really run into issues with it. It's just an eyesore for me, and I can't understand why they decided to go with that route. I did do some basic upgrades for this printer, which again, I'll link in the description. And the things I did was an LCD screen holder because the LCD screen does not come mounted on anything. And to me, that's silly. So I mounted it to the top frame of the 2020 aluminum. I also added some bed tighteners, which make adjusting the bed's uh, screws a lot easier and nicer on your thumbs. I added a drag chain because one, it looks really cool. Two, it also helps with cable management. And I added a fan duct, was, which was a really big upgrade. I actually added a second fan and wired it to the board for that first layer cooling, especially for PLA. And I had some really big improvements in quality when I was doing my little test benchy. So I highly recommend that upgrade. If nothing else, it's a 
six dollar upgrade if that for the fan and the little bit of plastic so my final verdict on this printer is that it's really not a bad printer the cons that i have with this printer don't really affect print quality but rather the overall experience that you can expect from this printer the price is really good the quality is good and i think that it's a solid kit if you're like me then you're probably not going to keep it stock anyways and there's a lot of upgrades that you can make to this printer to make it even better than it already is if you do want to find out more or purchase this printer for yourself, links will be in the description. Shout out to GearBest for supplying me with this printer, and um, I had, again, a lot of fun building this. And if you guys have any other questions, concerns, or anything like that prior to picking up this machine, let me know in the comments down below, and I will do my absolute best to get back to you guys on them as soon as I possibly can. All right, guys, on that note, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.